guys, Brady here from Marquee Flooring. Uh, welcome to the Thursday training. Uh, today we're going to be going over different flooring species, uh, how to tell the differences, um, some of the similarities with the different timber species. Uh, so we've got Colin here from Toral, uh, he's going to run through everything um, there is to know about the timber species. Thanks Brady. Uh, thanks to Marquis for uh, inviting us down here to uh, do this today. My name is Colin Irk. I've uh, been uh, with Boral Timber for over 20 years, nearly 30 years in the industry. Uh, relationship with Marquis Flooring for over 25 years, uh, everything's going strong. Uh, today I just want to talk about the different species that we have, options that you have in different tones of species, uh, pricing guidelines, uh, ratings that you have on the different walls and different species, hardness ratings on your timber and then we'll get over to do the, uh, the small installation just on it. A little bit of technical info on uh, laying out white boards that can be secret. Uh, Alright, so we'll start off. Uh, we've got Floral Timber has a 16 species of timber that they produce, all in varying sizes, varying colours, uh, varying grades as well. We also produce, Floral Timber is one of Australia's largest hardwood manufacturers. Um, highly regarded in the timber flooring industry, we manufacture 19 mil traditional solid flooring, overlay. 14 mil overlay and it comes right up to a whiteboard 180 mil now. Uh, parquetry, engineered flooring, decking as you can see on this structure up here, and uh, structural timbers. But we'll start off, today's mainly about our 19 mil flooring, but we'll start off over here with some of the species that we do and pricing guidelines that we depend on the species and the grade. So up the top here we have our red iron bark, traditionally known as a very hard timber. Uh, really dark red tones for the timber and really good grades. But just also on these coatings that we've also got on here, this is also a hard wax oil that's on here to bring out the coatings nice and well, uh, the grain nice and well. So your red iron bar, very, very hard timber, Janker rating of about 14. I'll talk about Janker ratings a little bit later on. Very dark red tones, very clean timber. Um, insect feature and so forth is rather minimal in your red iron bar. Then you have your grey iron bar, Similar in um, harvest, very, very close to the same Janker rating of 14. Price guide on your iron barks are up in the upper schedule of your, of your pricing. So, compared to some of the other timbers, your iron barks are up there near the top. Turpentine, similar tones to what you'll have in your iron barks there. Very hard timber as well. Most of your darker timbers are a hard timber. Um, turpentine, again, up in the higher schedule there. All these harder timbers here are very clean timber. So when we run the material, the feature that comes out of the, the uh, iron bark is very minimal. So the downgrade in that timber is uh, a very small amount. Brush box, one of the most popular timbers throughout the years. A lot of old homes through the 40s, 50s and 60s were built brush box as their platform and carpet put over the top of it. Now you rip up the carpet and you've got a $50,000 The brush box again, very much wanted timber. Um, it does have a lot of grain that runs through it. You can go from light browns to dark browns to reds in there, pinkish colours all through it as well. Again, up in that higher range of price. So all these ones here, except for the blue gum, are up in the higher range of price. Very low in feature. Then you come to a red, which is our Sydney blue gum, our most popular red on the market. Now, it's in the lower end of the price range. So you can see there you can go from a dark red to a light red and there's a big difference in pricing between those two. So customers may be happy just to settle for that red rather than have to pay a fair bit more to put the red iron bar down. So there is options in total. It does get a bit of feature in here. As you can see there's a little bit of insect trails on these ones here. Again in the lower end of the price range. We also have some other reds that we do produce that are at a similar cost. So that's pretty much our, our darkish brownish coloured range then. So we move on to our light range here. The main one we want to talk about is black butt. So that's our most popular species that everyone buys. Black butt is probably coming out too most popular. Black butt is getting up towards the higher end of the scale with uh, pricing now because everyone wants to use it. Resource is getting a little bit harder to get a hold of. So we've, we've sampled these 
other light coloured timbers here, just so you can see that there is options from using another timber that is slightly cheaper than the black bark but very similar in colour tone. So your Aussie beech here is a mixture of light colours. So the Aussie beech will have black bark in it, it will have stringy bark in it, it will have this name, and it can have tower in it. it can even have a little bit of slight gum in it. So it's a mixture of light coloured timbers. Black bark, just about everyone knows what black bark looks like. Um, again, the feature is, is there's a quite a bit of feature that comes out in all of your lighter timbers. So all of these will have very similar features as far as gun vein goes. They are borer holes, um, burls, and pretty much gun pockets that can appear through the boards there as well. So your lighter timbers have more feature than what your darker timbers have, but black butt is our most common and up there in price. Uh, we then look at your stringy bark, which is down in your lower end of your dollar value. So this is getting up a bit higher, and this is getting a bit lower. And mess made as well. But all of these lighter ones by the black bark are pretty low in price. Now, a lot of customers will come and ask for black bark without even being aware that there is other colours very similar in the product range probably suit their tone and colour that they want to put in the house, but the pricing is a lot better than what you'll get out of the black bark. Um, Talonwood again, and the spotted gun. They're both in the middle range of pricing, but there is options other than just going straight for black bark. But I'll quickly talk about grading, and then I'll get on to the uh, hardness ratings of these various timbers. So with grading, tomorrow produces four different grades. We produce classic or a select grade, an Australian grade or a standard grade, and in between those two we do a standard and better grade. And most of these ones here, except for the black butt, are a standard and better grade just on this level. So as you can see, there's a select grade here. Select grade's a minimal feature, a minimal insect damage that's in the timber. Um, very, very clean timber, but there are permissible features allowed in that timber. Mark, we produce predominantly in a standard and better grade. Now, as you can see, standard and better grade there, it's not too dissimilar to the select grade that's sitting there. So you have a stringy bark, which is already cheaper in prices because of the, the species that it is, and the amount of availability that there is as well, to a black bark where the price is up here. So there's not too much difference in the look on the floor, but the price in there is a fair bit. So if customers always come in and ask for black bark, there's always a chance that you can move them over to something else if the tone of colour is what they're looking for. Mess mate, it's a little bit different, that's got some nice range running through it. Uh, we've also got a little bit of mess mate over here as well. So the mess mate is again in those tones as well as the Aussie beach, and they're all a little bit cheaper than your black bark. Um, the spotted gun. Another alternative is what it done, which is in the middle range to the higher range, it's just really bark. So there's a, there's a tone mix between your black bark and your, your spotted gum that can sort of fit in with customers. Uh, the tallow wood here, everyone's used tallow wood on walls and bridges and so forth for hundreds of years. Very, very durable timber. Uh, has a little bit of a yellowy tone to it, depending on the coating that you put on there. Um, still a popular species. Very, very um, uh, stable timber once it's laid down. Um, and the spotted gun that we do, the New South Wales spotted gun. Alright, I'll jump onto uh, gradings for you. So, in the standard and better grade, but this select grade, which is got here in the black button, as I said, there's very minimal feature that's on there. In a standard and better grade, which is our one between select and standard grade, We'll get your normal gun lane feature through here, but you can get some pretty wild looking feature that's in there as well. And the next layer down, you your Aussie grade, your Australian grade, you can have a fair bit more. So standard and better grade, what we produce these lighter species in. It's a selected Australian grade. So it can still fall into Australian grade, but we pull all the to make it just that next level up. Hardness rating for your timber. Um, 
a Jenga test is basically a steel ball hitting the timber, seeing how far it dent into the timber, and you get a number. So a Jenga rating of 14 for your iron bar. <coughs> Everyone's aware of Tazzy Oak. Tazzy Oak's been used throughout the country in kitchens, on floors, and so forth. That's only around about four and a half to five on the Jenga rating. Uh, European oak, French oak, they're all around about six on the Jenga rating. The lowest one that we produce would be about 7.1, which would be the Aussie Beach here. Now, everyone's used Tassie Oak and they're using European Oak in the houses and so forth. There's no issues. We, we use some of our harder tunes in sports balls, so like Black Park, Spock, you know, uh, even Iron Park can be used in different sports balls. But our lowest one is a 7.1 on the Jenga Fine for normal household. Um, Black Butt's 9.1, so basically our Australian timbers are a lot harder than the imported timbers, so if there is any way, anyone worried about denting in the floor, pretty much all of our timbers, you're going to be fine with it. You can't stop any dents being put on the floor. People walk around in stilettos, you have a point load going on there. Um, yeah, I've even seen iron bark with dents range. Right? Um, that, I think that we might uh, try and jump on the installation. Is there any other questions? Uh, is, is an Aussie Beach just a mixed mold? Yeah, Aussie Beach is a mixture pretty much of all of these lighter coloured tunes. Even Spot Gun can mix in there. So what we've got, we've actually probably got a bit of black bat in here at the moment and a bit of stringy bark. Can't really see any talent wood in there, but it is a mixture of all that. That's why we give it a rating of a 7.1 like the hardest rating on the Jank mode. That's to the lowest species of timber that's in there. So it could actually have species of timber there up, up at 11 with spot gun and jank ray and harness ray. It would only be the lighter boards of the spotted gum though, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. It, it, won't be a, it won't be a dark one. Every now and again you might get a dark one running through there, but you don't know what it looks like when it's finished. Yeah. And once you coat it, you can, some of the boards can come out dark. Aussie Beach is brilliant because you've got such a mixture of boards and character running through those boards. Stringy bark's very much the same. So stringy bark's not just one species that we do a stringy bark, there's about five different species of stringy bark and we mix them all together. Alright, so what, we, what I just want to explain here today is so coral timber produces that is different sizes of 90 mil boards. So we have a 63 by 19 and 85 by 19, a 130 by 19s, and we do a 180 mil uh, Traditionally, you couldn't secret nail a 85, uh, anything over 85 mil wide, uh, but we've got a guideline where you can trail glue over particle board or plywood and secret nail 130 mil wide board. Um, the reason we just want to put a, a little bit of demonstration on here today is I've been out to quite a few jobs uh, where the guys are trowel gluing, but when they're bringing the boards in, they're not. They're sort of they're sort of placing the boards over here and then pushing them over, and the glue can get caught up in between the tongue and groove. What that does is it forces them to either chisel it in or leave it, hit the secret nail a lot harder and actually bend the tongue or break the tongue. Then the next board coming in, they've got the same issue, and they're going to keep on doing it. And you'll actually have um, gaps starting to appear, they ring up their supplier, and you're getting a little bit angry, and then I come out and have a look at the board. Um, we actually did one just here before, which we had a little bit of glue stuck underneath. And we did that on purpose before. Um, a little bit of glue underneath, and that create, it created that gap because we couldn't close it up. Um, but, We'll have a go here and we'll see, uh, see how we go. So just on this board, so probably, I probably wouldn't put that board in if we're doing it more. I'd probably cut that out just in case that breaks with uh, a staple going through there. Is that because of the gum vein? Yeah, the gum pocket that's in there, the gum vein. That wouldn't we'll interfere with anything no. though? Oh, it works out all right. It won't change anything up if it goes in though? No. no. So what we want to do is try and place that board down as close as we can um, to the, the board that's already here, rather than pushing the board over. So 
that way we're not actually getting some of that glue up in between. There's not much relief underneath in those grooves. That crowning glue is. Now when you're stapling over five or part of the board, you don't have to stick to your four fifty centers like you're doing over battens or joists or something. You can put in as many staples as you as you like, but you can't go over that four fifty as far as just Sometimes you'll have a spring in the boards where you need to put extra staples in there. Because you're going over a structural platform anyway, which is a little part of the board. As long as you don't, as long as you don't break that tongue by putting too many. Some, some timbers are liable to split a little bit more than others. If you put too many staples in there, you can split a lot. half an inch away at the most, rather than guys for that slide all the way in. Understanding of climate, 
the size of timber and the distance is from the bench. So understanding that six inch boards move a little bit more than four inch boards. Just a, if there's an option to, yes I can put an expansion gap in here at five metres rather than six metres, which is the standard, put it in at five. And what are the general expansions that you should allow for per metre? Oh, per, meter, per meter it's, it's 2 mil, but it's 12 mil on either end, yes. on either side. Your solid timbers don't move generally on, on your end, so you, you, you don't need your expansion on the end. But maximum 6 metres. So Any expansion on the ends? No, not, not on the ends. Don't need to at all? It only moves a tiny bit. On your engineer floors, yes, you do need to put expansion on the end. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've got skirting boards, you might as well leave an expansion on the end anyway. Yeah. Just leave it. So minimum 12 and then more if it's going bigger than what size? 6 metres is your maximum by standard. Um, if you're doing it in, in interland on the Gold Cups, I would try and think about bringing that back down to about 4 metres, depending on the size of the board. Your moisture content on the interland on the Gold Cups is the same as what you have in the plane. The amount of rainfall, it's colder than the moisture content. Um, the and acclimatisation, did I miss that part? Did you go through? Acclimatisation, I didn't speak on that. But our, we, we aim to dry our timber to about 10.5%. Um, Borrell has a very strict drying schedule. Um, we, we buy premium logs and if we, if we don't get enough time to air dry it out in the yard, which is generally up to six months, we'll kill and dry it. We that we can dry it slowly. There's all different variables and depending on the species. Each species has got its own drying technique. So, um, black bark is different to say iron bark. Different timbers, different cellular structure. Um, but which aim to try and dry it at about 10, 10 and a half percent. Now, that timber goes all over the road. So your climate here would be about 12, 12 and a half percent. Yes, it does need um, climatisation if there's no other contributing factors like that. Um, rainforest around you, there, there's certain, certain things that you need to do. Now, acclimatisation can, can take a week, it can take months. If you acclimatise something down in the winter, it's going to drive timber down, you may have an issue later on. So therefore, you should also consider, if you're putting timber in winter, in, in winter perhaps you need to allow a little bit more expansion, because you know when summertime comes, that floor is going to expand. There is quite a few considerations, but we aim to dry it around 10 and a half percent. Acclimatise before it gets installed? Okay, so for yes. our 19mm, we recommend acclimatising before installation. Our overlay, you lay it and leave it. Leave it for as long as you can before you send it in. Two different applications. Um, one is basically trail glue, no picture, others is fixed. Um, the science behind that is much trial and tested that we've done through the years. Overlay seems to perform a lot better if you acclimatise it straight up this way rather than before. Another issue if you acclimatise overlay before then is you can start to get the boards to spring and bow a little bit. When you're going to lay say an 80 mil direct on concrete, you can't pull them boards in. So um, all of our overlays are straight on. You don't want any more on concrete. I'm sure you guys will love them later. Bananas and all that. No one else does it. So, um, yeah, overlays performs brilliantly if you're applying to it straight up. Two weeks is normal, pretty much. Time period between installation and then The floor will move a little bit and then it'll settle down. Parquetry is the same. The climatise up installation can't climatise parquetry beforehand because it's machine. It's machine to, <laughs> to, <be square>. <laughs> to fit into a pattern. Yep. If it takes up moisture and the cover width on your individual boards grow, you're not going to be able to lay it down. I was going to say that many people do it overlay to companies or? It's, yeah. In Queensland? Albeer? Yeah, we, we allow you to put the 80 mil over the concrete. Yeah. We don't allow the 130 mil over it. Simply because it's a wider board. Yeah, to a size well. Did you come up with 
cover off on the grading? Ready so, And what about and the process that goes behind grading? Is it manually done? Is it? Okay, so we have what's called a LUX scanner. So it's a computerised grading system. Uh, you can run it 70 to 90 linear metres a minute running through it. So I don't know if a human that can grade that. Uh, we also then have a manual grading card that comes out of that as well. Uh, so it's programmed. Here's our coral standards, which are the same as Australian standards, if not exceed Australian standards. Um, so we have a, a program in our computer, our classic grade, our standard data grade. As well. um, we do have a lower grade as well, a natural, but we only have a very small amount of material. As well. So we have our new gradings with the uh, scanner has actually helped us um, make better use of our resources. The coral timber is uh, part of the responsible wood scheme. They are uh, EFC and AFS certified as well, which are two prominent international um, schemes and certifications. And our role in chain of custody, which is being able to produce, show where you source that timber from um, sustainable organic forest, is running at 94%.